Tonight, <clears throat> I want to focus on uh, chapter, uh, verse number 16 in the Bible here. Verse number 16, look down. And the Bible says, uh, it says, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe un is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. And uh, th this is the part I want to focus on. The title of my sermon tonight is Dispensation in the Bible. So just the word dispensation in the Bible. I'm not preaching about or against dispensationalism. I just want to look at the mentions of dispensationalism. Because there's a false teaching that says that there's, there's different ways of salvation throughout the Bible. This is dispensationalism. And uh, it's false. They say there's seven dispensations, but the word only occur, occurs four times in the Bible. And guess what? They're all in the New Testament. Mm. So that's in itself just really fishy. But I want to just see what the Bible says regarding this word. <clears throat> and so, first off, I want to uh, define what the word dispensation is. If you just look up the word dispensation on uh, dictionary.com, it just says an act or instance of dispensing or distribution. So it's, it's, it's giving something out or distributing. I mean, it's very simple. It's not a complicated word. You know, something that's given out. And, uh, you know, people like to twist this and, and make it into something that it's not. But that's all that the word means. And let's look at those four times in the Bible. This is the first mention. I'm going to do them in order that they're mentioned in the New Testament. So first off, we see it here in 1 Corinthians chapter chapter 9. And this is Paul writing to the church at Corinth, or, or the people of, of Corinth. And uh, it goes on and it says in verse 16, it says, for, for necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. So he's saying necessity was laid upon him, and woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. So he, had to, he, pre he preached the gospel of necessity. It was laid upon him. And it says in verse 17, for, for I do this thing willingly, for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. So uh, he was committed to distribute, dispense the gospel unto certain people. It was committed unto him to do that dispensing of the gospel. And we see that. If you'll turn in your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 13, I want to show you where God commits this unto him. Turn with me to Acts chapter 13 in your Bibles. While you're turning there, I'm going to read Acts chapter 9 uh, and verse uh, 15. It says, and this is actually, you know, God speaking to Ananias here, uh, but it's the, the vision that Paul had earlier on in the chapter. Verse 15 says, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So Paul was chose, a chosen vessel to bear God's name to the Gentiles. And he had to suffer great things for this. Now, uh, where I had you turn in uh, Acts chapter 13, Acts chapter number 13 and verse number 46. <clears throat> verse number 46, it says, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So right here we see that, that Paul is turning unto the Gentiles. He's speaking to the Jews right now, and he's saying uh, that they, they, they're unworthy of everlasting life. They deem themselves unworthy of everlasting life. So he's turning to the Gentiles right here in Acts chapter 13. And it's a big turning point with Paul and Silas. They were separated, and uh, God had a certain thing He wanted to do. Look at verse 47. It says, For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And the reason I'm bringing Paul up so much, and I want to look at Paul, is because all the mentions of dispensation, of the word dispensation, are by Paul in the, in the epistles. And so, Paul is the one mentioning it, and it's always, you know, referring to him in, in, that, in that manner. We'll see that later on. But here we see that uh, 
that in, in Acts chapter 13, when you read through the book of Acts, Acts chapter 13 is like a change in, in the book of Acts. Because it all focuses on Paul after that. That's all just about it. You know, after verse 9, we see Peter has the vision of the sheet coming down from heaven, <clears throat> saying, Call not thou anything common or unclean. And, you know, he's being told right there to, 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 to go to the uncircumcision. And he just, he really doesn't do it. And so God, you know, sends Paul to do this, right? And uh, he even says that he was the least of the apostles, you know, one born out of due time. <laughs> and so, so if we keep, uh, keep going here, <clears throat> it says in, uh, turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Let's see, uh... Ephesians chapter 1, and uh, I'm going to keep reading here, Acts chapter 13, verse 19. It says, uh, talking about Paul, it says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And it goes on and he says, <clears throat> Unto the Jews I, I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. And so, and then it goes on and says, Without the law, and actually, I, I'm, this is the wrong place. I, that's the chapter we read, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. But it, he, he became all things to all men. He wanted to preach the gospel to all men. And so, uh, let's go on to the next place that it's mentioned. But the first place that it's mentioned in the Bible uh, is kind of like the, the first point that I, ti I titled it the conversion, right? Because Paul was, he was dispensed uh, and told to go and preach the gospel. It was given unto him to go and preach the gospel. Now look down at Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And verse number 7. Verse number 7, it says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace, wherein He hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure, which He hath purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, He might gather together in one in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in Him. <clears throat> so right here, this, uh, this, this section, we're actually going to look at both, two more mentions of dispensation, because there's two in Ephesians, the word dispensation. And this one I kind of titled the merger, right? Because he takes, he takes two, specifically, gathered together into one. He wants to bring it into one, right? So the Jews were a chosen people in the Old Testament to bear His name, right? And we see that all throughout the Old Testament. And they were uh, to the other nations, you know, they were to bear the name, uh, you know, be the light to the world. But today, when Jesus Christ came, He, he wanted to bring it in, though everybody, into that fold, right? It's not that... People in the Old Testament couldn't get saved or anything like that, like dispensationalism teaches. It's just that the oracles of God were committed unto the Jews, to a, uh, a fleshly people, you know. And today there is no nation of Israel. There is no, there is no fleshly uh, chosen nation. It's a spiritual nation that's chosen, and uh, it's to all that call upon Him. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Uh, and so... Today, this is the merger. Turn to uh, turn over one page to Ephesians chapter 2. It might even be on the same page there for you. Ephesians chapter 2. <clears throat> and it goes on in verse 11. It says, it says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circum the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, they have access to God through Jesus Christ. They don't have to go <clears throat> to the temple. They don't have to go and, and, and do the sacrifices and all these things, which... We're, we're, we're never going to make one perfect anyways in the Old Testament. It was all by faith anyways. But they didn't have to do that. 
to be obedient to God, then you don't have to do that anymore. Those things are done away in Christ Jesus. You have access to God the Father through Jesus Christ. You know, a, a one-on-one relationship right there. It's, it's very simple. So, <clears throat> he's saying that that, that the, uncircum, or the circumcision called them the uncircumcision. And it goes on in verse, in verse 14. It says, For He is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So He's made both one. He's broken down that middle wall of partition when Jesus Christ was uh, crucified. Remember, the, the veil was rent in twain. That, that was a symbol of it being, it's done. That's done. There's no more physical nation. There's no more temple needed. There's nothing like that. We have access because of what Christ did for us on the cross. And verse 15, it says, Having abolished in the flesh, in his flesh, the enmity, even the law of commandments <clears throat> contained in ordinance, for to make his, in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Uh, so it's very clear that this is what the Bible says in verse 19. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners. Remember that's what they were called when they would come into the land. They were called strangers and foreigners. Right? There are no more strangers and foreigners. It says, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. So they are citizens. We, as Gentiles today, are citizens uh, of, of uh, <clears throat> heavenly Jerusalem. Right? We're of the household of God. You know, to as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on His name. You know, <clears throat> The circumcision and the uncircumcision have been made one. There's no more, there's no more fleshly chosen people today. And, and people in Israel, they can, they, they can stop all about it, all these uh, dispensationalists, but it's just not true. You know, they can, uh, these uh, Judaizers and all that stuff. Um, so turn over to chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, and this is where the second or the third mention of dispensation, uh, the word dispensation is used. In, uh, let's see, first number one. It says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the, of the grace of God, which is given to me, <clears throat> which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So he's speaking of chapter 1 where he mentioned it before. In verse 5 it says, Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body and partakers of his promise in, the, in Christ by the gospel. So again, he's just reiterating it. And this is the... This is I, I relate this part of where the word dispensation is used as the merger, right? This is where, <clears throat> he, he it, in verse 2, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me, you were. So he was told to go out, proclaim this to the uh, Gentiles, and to say, you know, you're fellow heirs now. You're of the same body, partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. And so that... Right there is <clears throat> what I what I call the merger of, of the two. And it's always been God's plan was to do that. Um, so you have Paul, the conversion. You have <clears throat> the merger there. And then let's let's look at uh, the uh, the fourth mention. The fourth mention. And this seems like it's going kind of fast, but uh, the fourth mention is in Colossians chapter 1. So turn with me to Colossians chapter 1. <clears throat> now there, there was a, obviously a plan that God had for this, right? You know, when you read through the Old Testament, you see how the nation of Israel, when they, when they took the land, they went in and they were just told to just wipe all these people out, you know? 
And sometimes you might get the idea, you might think, you know, man, that, you're just, just wiping them out. You know, couldn't some of those people have been saved or something or, or whatever. <clears throat> but, you know, God's perfect will <clears throat> was for that to happen and for them to bear his name. And then, so in the last days, <clears throat> he might bring together one into one both and the casting away of them. This is, this is the, the last point here or the last place we're going to look at. Well, not the last scripture, but the last place the dispens dispensation is used. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, look at verse 25. It says, Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from, the, from ages and from generations, but is now made manifest to his saints, <clears throat> to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Notice how it's every man, every man, every man. He wants every man to, to uh, be preached to and warned and taught. And so... <clears throat> But look back at verse 25, it says, Wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. But it goes on and explains that God's purpose for this dispensation of the gospel to Paul, the apostles, the, the great commission is, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Well, the, the, the disciples, the apostles, they weren't doing that. They kept banging their heads against the wall trying to preach to the Jews. You know, and they just kept <clears throat> kept doing it for whatever reason. And so God chose Paul to do this thing. He chose him <clears throat> to to be a light to the Gentiles. And the reason being is because he wanted to bring in the riches of the world. It says in verse twenty five or twenty seven, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. And so <clears throat> I want to look. And uh, another passage, Romans chapter 11, kind of talks about this. So turn with me to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. And, uh, you know, Jesus, Jesus, you know, it wasn't a mystery. Jesus was here. He, he was preaching to the Jews in parables so they wouldn't understand. They couldn't understand. Right? He said, it's given to you to know the, the things of the kingdom of God, you know. But to them it is not given. You know, that's why he spoke to them in parables. <coughs> And in Matthew, while you're turning there, Matthew 21, verse 42, it says, Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the Scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. So they weren't bringing forth the fruits. They weren't bringing forth the fruits. And so he's going to give it to a nation that's going to bring forth the fruits thereof. And are the Jews today, are they bringing in the fruits of God? Nope. I mean, I, I don't even know any Jews. <laughs> I mean, man, a lot. If, if, and God, God brought the two together into one. And, and I don't know a single Jew I, I, that's been in a church, in a Baptist church that I've ever went to. It's like, where are they all at? Well, well, the thing is, is they've been intermingled into all races. And, you know, to say that, you know, these people are actually Jews is kind of foolish to, to me to think that. You know, I think they were scattered into all nations. But, nonetheless, who's bringing in the fruit today? Who's bringing in the fruit? Is it the Jews or is it the Gentiles? The Gentiles are the ones bringing in the fruit. You know, and specifically, it's, you know, soul-winning Baptist churches that are bringing in the fruit. You know, you might say these uh, mega churches are bringing in a bunch of fruit. You know, they got thousands of people worshiping their uh, praise and worship band, you know. No, that's not fruit. That's just uh, vain glory. That's all that is. Right. And uh, they're, not, they're not even, these people aren't even saved. They believe in the work, salvation. You talk to them about soul-winning, they, they just, they don't understand the gospel, you know. It's a shame. It, it is. It's a shame. Shame on those pastors and those people that, that are leading people astray. 
But uh, the real churches that are bringing in the fruit are soul winning churches, soul winning Baptist churches. They have the right gospel, salvation by uh, faith alone in Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross. So look down at where I had you turn, Romans chapter 11 <clears throat> and verse 11. It says, <clears throat> and remember we're talking about the riches that brought God, God dispensed. He's, he's trying to bring in those riches, so he committed unto Paul. And it says in verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to, the, to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Verse 14 says, If by any means I provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. And verse 15, For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall be the receiving of them but life from the dead? Now the dispensationalists will try to like really twist this and say that, you know, they're all going to be saved one day. You know, like I said, I've never even met, like, a, a, somebody that claims they're fully a Jew. You know, I've met people at the door that say they are they practice Judaism, you know. But, but the thing is, is that they'll twist this and say that, you know, they're all going to be saved one day. But it's just saying, like Paul, in verse 14, it says, He wants to provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. So they can still be saved if they... They believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the scales are dropped from their eyes. The, the blinders are lifted. And they can be saved. And in and, and the last part of verse 15, it says, uh, What shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Kind of like the, the, the uh, olive branch that was broken off. You know? And it was, it was grafted back in. A wild olive branch cast back. How much more the one that was on the, on the uh, branch to begin with? You know? It should take right to it, you know, because the, to them was committed the oracles of God in the Old Testament, you know. So, you know, the, verse 12, though, the reason we turn here is because it says, Now if the falling of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentile, how much more are they finished? So, we see that the fall of them brought the riches of the Gentiles. You know, and so that's 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 why this had to happen to bring. I mean, because how many more? There's so much, so many people out there than just in the nation of Israel. You know, that needed to be reached. You know, the riches of the world. I mean, man, so many other nations out there that needed to be reached with the gospel, and uh, <clears throat> we see that even with our missions trips. You know, going to Jamaica. I mean, those people over there, so receptive to the gospel. I mean, man, we just need more people that'll, that'll go dispense the gospel to some nations, you know? Not, uh, not preach some weird thing about how people are saved differently in different times. That's not what it's talking about, friend. It's talking about just going and showing people the gospel. Giving them the gospel. And so, you know... Just a, a little recap is, first off, Paul was, you know, a, a great light shone about him, and he was committed to this. He was told to go meet Ananias, and then he was told to go preach the gospel to the Gentiles. So that was like, that was like the, uh, what, what did I say it was? The, I don't have my points wrote down. That was, that was the conversion, okay? The conversion of Paul, that's how I related it. The conversion, and then, uh, the second point was the merger, right? He brought the two together into one, right? So there, there. It's not, it's not Jews and Christians. It's Christians. You, you everybody. There's not some Jewish uh, Christian church. They're not supposed to go to some separate church, right? You're supposed to go to a Bible-believing church all together. You know, it's not, it's not some, some weird thing where they're supposed to go off by themselves. <coughs> But uh, number three, we see that because of the dispensation that Paul did with the gospel, he went out and distributed the gospel, that the riches of the world have been brought in. And we, we see that clearly. You know, Paul, from Acts chapter 13, he, he went on and he, he wrote 13 chapters of the Bible. 
you know, yay 14. Some people might argue, you know, Hebrews. <laughs> so, but clearly he wrote 13 chapters of the Bible, you know. I mean, from Acts 13, and then all the books after that up to Hebrews. I mean, man alive. And guess what? They were all to Gentiles. All the Gentiles, you know. So, you know, the, the Gentiles needed to be reached with the gospel. This was God's plan all along, was to uh, go out and to choose a nation, a flesh and nation. They were stiff-necked people. You know, they were always doing the wrong thing. They were all, it seemed like, until they got somebody to lead them. They needed somebody to lead them all the time. But, and then the casting away of them was the riches of the world. And uh, the last thing is, you know, we see the Bible says, you know, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. So we need to preach to everyone, you know, not just, you know, just uh, people that are our same color or race or whatever. You know, we're not right. black Hebrew Israelites. You know, they're only gonna go. They're only gonna go to the black people. Don't you know that you're chosen? It's like no, no. Everybody is chosen to to be saved. It's whether they accept that gift or not. You know, you, the name's on the package. You just gotta sign for it. So, you know, just in conclusion, we can understand it. The words dispensation in the Bible clearly have a meaning, and it's not this false teaching. It's just clearly, that we need to distribute God's uh, grace to all men, you know, and we have a great example of Paul's ministry in that. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, just thank you for this day, just thank you for all the, the men and uh, women that came tonight to the service. I just pray that uh, you would bless them and protect them as they travel home. Just, just help us to uh, get a burden for, for lost souls and go out and uh, preach your word and just distribute it to everyone that we see, Lord. And we, we do great exploits here in these last days. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.